Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Before I talk about um, intro to comparative religion, I think it's probably important to just introduce myself. Um, I guess a product of Dawin, since this is what we are doing here uh, at this uh, National Dawa Academy. We, we are teaching people the importance of Dawa. Myself, I became a Muslim when I was 16. So for the first 16 years of my life, I lived as a Christian and, and we followed different uh, denominations. And afterwards, Allah blessed me to study at the University of Medina, the Islamic University of Medina, and I achieved a bachelor's degree in Islamic theology. And afterwards, when I returned back, I got a chance to go to Vanderbilt University and got a master's in theological study. There I studied um, Islamic theology, Christian theology, as well as uh, Jewish theology. So this is something that I truly enjoy and somewhat lived it. So what I want to do with the remaining time is just to very hopefully briefly touch on what we'll be covering and the importance of this topic. Uh, I think this topic, again, is, is a very important topic, a crucial topic. And that is, we find throughout the Quran and the Ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam many times over and over again are mentioning the arguments, the belief, the ideology of the polytheists, of the atheists, of the Christians, Jews, and what have you. And many times you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala juxtaposing it with the correct views. So we see that in the Quran, the last revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about other beliefs and then deconstructs their argument or counters their argument. So this is very important to know. And a lot of the beliefs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with deals with in the Quran are the belief that were around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So it is only logical that we should understand the ideas, the uh, and the religions, uh, the beliefs that surround us. And on top and, and on top of that, this is a great, great dawa tool. You always hear this expression that you need to know your audience. So you need to know your audience and obviously you need to know their thinking. And many of us probably have experienced many times someone addressing an audience and this person seems like he's from another world, another place or another time. So this is another reason why this topic is uh, of immense importance. It's a great Dao tool. Uh, as well as, not only is it a, a great Dawa tool, people will actually listen to you when they feel that you understand their perspective, and that you have knowledge of their belief, and you are addressing them with knowledge. This will cause them to listen and your Dawa to be more effective. Lastly, it shows that you really are concerned about the people. You understand, you took time and effort to understand what they are believing. I remember one time I was in a masjid and we were talking, it was Christmas time, and we were talking about the nativity scene and having the people understand what are they seeing in these Christmas decorations and what have you. And one older brother said, I don't care. I don't care what they think. And I was shocked, and he said this in front of everyone, and everyone was shocked. He thought this was religiosity, but it's just the opposite. Allah tells us what the Christians think and tells us about the Trinity. And that means also it hurt me because that means he wasn't concerned about my family. My, the vast, vast majority of my family, they think like this. And you cannot address them and address their issues if you don't know this issue. So also this could say, maybe I don't even care really about 
the, their salvation and about this message of Allah spreading if I'm not trying to understand the um, their viewpoint. And again, uh, what I mean by understand their viewpoint is uh, uh, we find throughout the Quran and Sunnah, so Allah tells us certain things about these faith and tells us what is proper faith. So with that being said, I just want to quickly just mention that we will cover in more detail, obviously, why comparative religion is important. We will cover um, how to use this knowledge in Dawah, how to make it uh, practical. And lastly, obviously, we'll focus primarily on Christianity because the vast, vast, vast majority of people here in America and the West and the world are Christians. So it's very important for us to understand Christianity and the different denominations, to understand um, their concept of God. Very, very important, because that's the main, main, obviously, difference, the concept of God, uh, the concept of Jesus, alayhi salam, the concept of salvation and this crucifix, and the crucifixion, the Bible, uh, and common questions in general. So we'll have take a thorough look at Christianity, uh, and obviously we will miss quite a quite a bit. Um, and then um, we'll look into Judaism. This is obviously uh, an important religion to look into, and um, a religion that millions of people here in America follow, and and many influential people follow. So uh, and one of the Abrahamic faith. So we'll look into that as well as atheism to to a certain extent. I know there's a class that will be teaching or be taught about atheism. So we won't go into it in detail, but it's important to compare these general thoughts. And, 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 and lastly, we'll go over some of the other uh, faiths a, a, as well and in less detail and some of the faiths that claim or ascribe themselves as Muslim. For example, you have um, Ahmadiyya's you have Nation of Islam, you have, and others who say that we're Muslim, and we'll take a closer look at them as well. Allah.